the last property is Parsival's. So, if you had two sequences x of n, y of n, then they are related like this and there is a special case of this general result if y happens to be the same as x then this becomes x of n times x star of n which is nothing but this magnitude squared on this side also you can make the same change and you get this result. And uh, if you know something about norms of signal. Uh, this is the norm of the given signal in the time domain and this is the L2 norm and it is defined like this. This is indeed the norm in the transform domain and the norm in the transform do domain is really defined like this. So, what this theorem states is that the norm in the time domain equals the norm in the frequency domain. Again, here I have stated this uh, for the uh, DTFT case and I am again using the x of omega notation rather than x of e to the j omega. And uh, since the norms are equal, uh, this is a statement of the fact that the DTFT is a norm preserving transform. If a transform is norm preserving, this is also called unitary. also known as unitary. And the proof is really simple. We will use two properties that we have already seen before and the simple application of these two properties will give rise to this result. We also we already seen that so this is this and the other property we have seen is x of n times y of n is nothing but 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi x of theta y of omega minus theta d theta. So, these two uh, properties will be used. So, the first sequence is x of n. 
So, this has transform x of omega. The second sequence is y star of n and the transform of y star of n is y star of e. So, this is y star of minus omega. You are right, it is y star of e to the minus g omega, but here in this context we are using the omega notation. Therefore, n going from minus infinity to plus infinity x of n times y star of n this is nothing but x of omega convolved with y star of minus omega evaluated at omega equal to 0. Right. So, this is nothing but 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi and remember this convolution is really circular convolution. Therefore, it is 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi x of theta y star of minus omega minus theta d theta and all of this has to be evaluated at omega equal to 0. Therefore, this is 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi x of theta y star of theta d theta. Therefore, n going from minus infinity to plus infinity x of n times y star of n is exactly this. And uh, what is the corresponding statement for the z transform case? that can be actually easily seen from this uh, result. So, if you now evaluate this at what point in z would this correspond to sum up over all n of what is on the left hand side. Very good. It is at z equal to 1. If you, if you evaluate the transform at z equal to 1, you are summing up the sequence over all n. Therefore, uh, here if you put z equal to 1, then that will be sum over all n x of n times y of n, it will be equal to this convolution evaluated at z equal to 1, that is all. Again, uh, we have to make sure that that is part of the region of convergence, only then can evaluate this at z equal to 1. So, we are actually done with all the properties of the z transform. So, the next thing to do would be to uh, evaluate the inverse z transform.